What's up, freaks? This is Steve Says, episode number 96. We're getting close to episode 100. And as you know, Steve Says is a live show. This this week, episode 96, we're going to talk about masks. We're going to talk about guns. We're going to talk about men. We're going to talk about parenthood. And we're going to, we're going to combine all that together. And it's going to be fucking awesome. This is usually, as you know, not necessarily what you want to hear, but on Steve Says, we're going to go over what you probably need to hear. We got you up on the Facebook up here, the Instagram's down here, so if I'm looking different directions. Always, some people will hate, but most can relate to the things we're going to go over on Steve Says. This We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. Again, this week is, what is the new man? What is it to, to manhood these days? What is a man's role in today's world? And really, what, what type of man are you? What type of man are you and what type of man do you want to be? And and we're going to tie all that into the little masks, the face diapers. We're going to tie that into some guns, some recent some recent posts that I've had here on on the Instagrams and on the internets as I give you a chance to log in here. Yes, bring in the fucking fire. S- Steve says is a live show on how to have a no excuses badass mindset guiding you to adapt, overcome the, all the obstacles that are preventing your success. I'm just trying to read comments as they're coming in. Overcome all the obstacles that are preventing your success in your, your health, your family, your finances. You could stop being a little bitch, get your shit together, and start living life on your own fucking terms. That's what we're talking about. We're going to focus on the mind, the body, the business. Having a role model mindset. How to operate with discipline, energy, confidence. Be an action taker and be your freak fucking self. This is a peak freak perspective on personal development, having a positive mindset, and of course, health and fitness at all times. So again, let's talk about it. We're going to talk about guns. We're going to talk about masks. We're going to talk about manhood. We're going to talk about fatherhood, parenthood. This is what we're going to be going over. And manliness and masculinity, because let me tell you something. It's a a sad state of affairs. I keep switching the cameras here. A sad state of affairs when being a man or manly is thought of as a negative fucking term. And it's fucking disgusting. And when men are just become passive aggressive, approval seeking, excuse making. You know, I can't fucking stand the excuses. Even though Facebook and the Instagrams want to show this shit backwards. And it says, Sasuke on. But if you flip that shit around, it says no excuses. So men these days, it's now considered manly. It's considered masculinity is is a bad word. It's considered a bad word. It's men these days are just suffering in silence or bottling up all the bullshit and the energy inside them until it just explodes out at the wrong time. Because they feel like if, if they talk about their struggles, they talk about their problems, they feel like it means they're not a badass. They're just not being manly. When really it's being a fucking bitch just holding that stuff inside. But we're not talking about just manliness in that way. We're talking about, we're going to tie it all together between some some recent events that go on, whatever, out in the real world and a couple of posts I did here on the Instagrams about guns, about masks and whatever else. Let's talk about masks. Let's talk about the fucking masks. The other day I went to, what was the place called? It was, they, they make those, the fruit, the fruit bowls, the Aussie berry bowls or whatever. And I thought masks were not mandatory anymore here in California because I don't go usually go to a place that need masks because I like to build up my immune system. I feel good. I feel good. So went to the place. I was on a daddy-daughter date with the little midget, and I told her we're going to go to... the hell is the name of the place? I can't remember the name of the place. What the fuck is that place called? Not Jamba Juice. The other, the one that makes the bowls. Anyway, we walk in. And the, the 16, 17-year-old girl and the 50-something-year-old dude behind the counter, they tell me that I need to put a mask on. I tell them I don't have a mask. They asked if I have one in my car. And I said, no. I said, I told them I didn't own a mask. And told me I couldn't come into their place and buy their fruit bowl thing for like nine bucks because I didn't have a mask. And if I wasn't with the little midget, I would have fucking walked out. But then they said, here, you have one. So they gave me one of the little surgeon's masks. So me and the little midget are sitting there like it's Halloween being dentists so we can get 
the bowl. I can't, what the hell is the name of that fucking place? It's a place that gets us through the project where we get the, the bananas and the berries on top of that little the, the bowl, whatever the hell the name of the place is. It'll come to me. Anyway, so we had to wear the little, the little face diapers while we waited for them to make our thing. All right, that's besides the point. Then there was the time in Vegas a couple of months ago, I talked about it, where we were working out outside by the pool and the overweight attendant, I don't know if it has anything to do with that he's overweight, I just feel like throwing in the facts. I'm just reporting the facts. The overweight, massively overweight attendant came to let us know that you had to wear masks anywhere, even outside, even at the pool, unless you were eating or drinking or smoking. Now, are you fucking kidding me? Fucking smoking. So you could take your mask off if you were smoking a fucking cigarette, but you couldn't take it off. We were working out as a family outside. Fucking, it's sick. It's fucking sick. And this is in Vegas. Only times that I've even worn a mask were when on a plane, because I've been traveling this entire time over the last two years. I don't know. I've been on planes and traveled more than I have in probably the previous 10 years. And... Somehow still kicking. Somehow the, the, the deadly diseases didn't get me out on those tubes that up in the air, like literally dozens of times across the country, tons of times in the last two years, all over the place. Probably visited, I don't even know, 15, 20 different states. You, you, if you had driving in, probably 30 different states. All right, then let's talk about the people. And, we're, and this is all going to tie together. It's all going to tie to the manhood, to the doing your duty. To even the 4th of July and guns. It's all going to tie together. So just, just bear with me as I just get this, this stuff off my chest and just keep you up to date on things that are going on here in, in Southern California, which we love it here in California. We love it. We deal with the Nazism and the bullshit gun laws. That's like the property tax we have to pay. That's like the luxury tax we have to pay to have the awesome weather and, and the palm trees and the pool and the outdoor gym all year round. We have an outdoor boxing gym that we use 12 months out of the year. Can't fucking beat it. Anyway, it's going to be these comments going on the Project Wolf. What's up? What makes me scratch my head the most is people driving alone in the mask. Literally, that's the next thing I, I was just about to say. That I'm, I'm in the car and see them driving alone. But wait, get this one. This one's even better. This one's even better. I'm in the car. So to, and, and I wish I could have taken a picture of this. The, the dumb motherfucker next to me, by themselves, in the car, windows up, wearing a mask. Another dumb motherfucker on the other side, by themselves, windows down, wearing a mask. So I'm not sure which one is the smart one, which one's the stupid one. But here's the fucking kicker behind me. In the fucking, I see in the little camera behind me, the rear view camera. This dumb motherfucker is in, because in California, the bikes are all over, the bikes are all over the place in some areas. So there's a dude on a bike, on a motherfucking bike, with his face diaper on, but not wearing a fucking helmet. So... It's just fucking mind blowing the stupidity around, and I even saw it in the Marine Corps boot camp, which was fucking that was disgusting too. They're wearing the masks, the Marine Corps boot camp, and it's just giving out the signal. This, it's fucking disgusting. So here's what I've come to the conclusion, and these the gentlemen in the in the people in the stores. I was in a store, a grocery store, and I haven't worn a mask in a grocery store ever in the last couple of years. I just haven't. I haven't. I felt the air was clean. So I'm in the grocery store and another overweight dude. It's funny how it's a lot of overweight people, right? Another extremely overweight, like morbidly obese dude. And nothing against I'm just stating the facts. So drawing the picture in the grocery store as I'm getting my egg whites and things like that. My protein shakes and stuff like that as, I, as I'm, I'm in the grocery store picking that up. Normally I don't go to the grocery store. Once in a while I want to get out of the cave. Once in a while I go out into society. Usually I'll just order that shit, it comes to the house. Order the groceries, and it comes to the house to save time. Once in a while I want to go out there when I just feel like going out there with the humans that come out of the cave. So I'm online in the grocery store. The morbidly obese dude behind me is talking to the, the, the cashier and saying, asking her if they didn't need to wear masks. Of course, he had, he had a double mask. I think he had a triple mask and then a face shield and a gas suit and all kinds of shit on him. Fucking idiots. Anyway. So he's asking the woman at at the cashier, who's a young girl, teenager or whatever, young, low 20s probably, if 
they didn't need to wear masks in the store. Basically being a passive aggressive little bitch, like saying to the lady because he doesn't want to say anything to someone else because confronting another man, like man to man, talking to them, it's just not that's, not, that's just not the way you could do things as a fucking man these days, right? That's not manly. That would also, who knows what that would be considered. That, that's too masculine. So he's asking this little girl if it's okay that someone's not wearing a mask, like hinting as in the, the ugly, bald, white guy in front of him is not wearing a mask. Anyway, fuck off, fuck off. Mind your own business. Because so that all these different scenarios made me come to the conclusion that this is, the, is society's new way of feeling like they're serving the country. This is like the new, new way. Of, they're thinking like, all right, they're not in the military. They didn't go to the military. They're going to now do their duty, their due diligence. They're going to do their fucking part by harassing anyone they see not going along with what, they, what they're doing. They're going to enforce it. They're going to be the enforcers. This is they're finally doing their due diligence in enforcing these masks and enforcing this stuff upon, upon people and telling a teenage girl getting her involved in, in something like, it's just fucking ridiculous. That's like what the new, that's what is considered the new man these days. That's the new man. The man that'll ask a teenage girl to confront another man for him that's standing in front of him in person. It's fucking disgusting. It is ass backwards. It is twisted. It's, it's this new sense of like authority, new sense of doing their duty, do, you know, contributing to society. Motherfucker, contribute to society by being a better role model to your kids. Contribute to society by taking care of yourself and being healthy and eat healthy and donate to charities. That's, you, that's how you could contribute to fucking society. Not being a fucking douchebag, being a passive aggressive, little approval seeking, look at me, I'm, I'm wearing this, so can this little teenage girl help me speak to another man that's standing next to me? It's fucking idiotic and it's disgusting and it's pathetic, really, is what it is. And now let's go on to guns. Guns is like the uh, is like the next level of masks. Like guns are evil. Non-mask wear people who don't have a mask on are evil. If you don't wear a mask, you're a fucking evil. If you don't wear a mask, you're being masculine, which is evil. So being a man is evil. Not wearing a mask is evil. Fucking guns are evil. So I had a post on the Fourth of July. You know the the holiday that people celebrate when they shove a bunch of deep throat some fucking twelve inch hot dogs wrapped up in some fucking bacon when they do that and you know the, the, celebrating a day that was fucking is all about war and battle and when it comes down to it fucking pew 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 motherfucking guns that's really what it, it comes down to and so I, I put a post of myself and the family, we're all holding our guns, of course, safety checked and unloaded and all that good stuff for the picture. A picture of it, just with the guns. Talking about that's what the holiday was about. The holiday was, uh, 4th of July was founded on guns. Freedom was founded on guns. Guns are what keep our freedom. It doesn't make you evil. It doesn't make you too manly. It doesn't make you too masculine because you have a gun. Like, imagine that. No mask, gun, and that's just being, that's like a double curse for being a man, which is, you know, it's not okay to be a man. It's not okay to be a man anymore these days. It's fucking frowned upon. It's almost disrespectful to, to say you're manly or manhood or masculinity. Fuck that. Fuck that. I'm going to be what a man's supposed to be, a provider, a protector, a role model. That's what it's supposed to be. So let's go back to this post. I did a post with these, with the picture of the guns. And we're all holding our guns that we shoot, that we've shot hundreds of times and put thousands of rounds through on the range. We have a lot of training in it. And of course, of course, the gun post, the gun post is, is it was is at least enlightening that those are always the most liked posts of mine on Instagram. Like my top five posts of all time have all been with guns and or kids and or kids and guns. The top posts. But there's always the most hated comments on those and the most private message I get from fucking little weasels talking about, someone said that my kids were going to end up in prison because they're in a picture with guns. They Just by seeing that, then they said we were a dysfunctional family, a, a messed up family, toxic family, that my seven-year-old daughter was going to end up being a murderer. This is what people are, t- are putting comments on. But you know what? They could do it on the internet. It's safe to do it on the internet. But if they were in the grocery store, let's say they were in the grocery store behind me 
and they happen to see that picture, you know what they'd probably do? They'd probably tell the 17-year-old cashier, hey, guns are bad. They wouldn't, you know, they would not never confront another man because that'd be too manly, and manliness is frowned upon. It's evil, fucking evil. So they tell me a seven-year-old daughter is going to be a murderer, they're going to end up in prison, that we have no family values, that we're not safe, that we're insecure, that we're weak. This is what we're told for having a picture with motherfucking guns. That, uh, that we think it's okay to kill people. That even something about school shootings. This is all put in comments or private messages after this post with holding guns on the 4th of July. Which the freedom was, was won with motherfucking guns. Do you understand that? Motherfucking guns. Yes, this new world is disgusting. Randy, what's up? So they're trashing me, my kids, saying my kids are going to be murderers, end up in prison. They're going to be psychos. They're going to be serial killers. They're going to shoot up their schools because I'm because I teach them about guns, because I don't shelter them and, and bubble wrap them and, and like the rest of the world. Not to mention that. So you know, just for my own fucking, just for fun. I click on some of these people who comment some things or some of these people send messages. And what do you know? What do you know? They're, I'm just stating the facts. I'm just reporting information to you out on the Instagrams of Facebook, the Twitter, Twats, and MySpaces, wherever the fuck else. Most of them happen to be very, very overweight. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a strange theme. And telling me I'm a bad parent. But when you're being a, not, being a horrible role model to your kids... And not teach them healthy habits. And letting them shove their face in a fucking iPad. Or shove their face in a fucking Big Mac with McWhopper with double bacon and cheese. And of course the motherfucking Diet Coke. That's okay. That's okay. But a kid with a gun is evil. It's bad. It's poor parenting. It's a dysfunctional family. Oh, we are also a family based off of fear. That's what we were to Like, you should hear like some of the stuff... Of, of comments and even even worse were the private messages that come on to those to those videos fucking disgusting fucking disgusting and let me tell you something when it comes to parenting so that's why this is all tied together from the masks to the fucking schooling to whatever else to the to the guns and to the man manliness and masculinity I'll tell you what when I was a kid my father never once had a conversation with me in 19 years of living in the same house. Never once sat on the floor and played Legos with me. Never once threw a fucking football to me. Never once told me anything about girls or life or anything. So I made the decision, unlike these fucking little bitch-ass motherfuckers that are, I, I can comment on people's shit on the internet, I made the decision I'm going to break the cycle in the family and I'm going to flip the switch and... I feel that the greatest work of the greatest, the the meaning of almost life for a man is to have children and to be a role model, to be a father. And the greatest work a man could do is be a protector and a provider to his family and to be a role model to his children. That's it. Because otherwise, like these other motherfuckers, is just creating creating another weak generation. The cycle is just continuing. And the next generation is going to be even more fucked up than this one because they have these fucked up parents, like these people in the grocery stores, these people in the in the juice bar, whatever the fuck that place, Nectar, Nectar it's called, the place in Nectar, I love the stuff there, but fuck man, the people in the grocery stores, the people on the internets, that's who, they're having kids and teaching them this shit, and that's gonna be the next generation, and it's just creating a weaker and weaker and weaker and softer and fucking scarier generation, that needs to be coddled, it needs to be like sheltered, and bubble wrapped from the real world, from the real shit that goes on in the world. It's fucking sick. It's really fucking sick. And again, a role model, a man, a man. There's nothing wrong to be a man out there, to be masculine, to be the man of the household. It's not offensive. And if it's offensive to someone, they could just fuck off and that's fine. You'll repel the fucking douchebags, you'll attract the like minded people. Because it's your responsibility. And, and you need to hold your family accountable. You need to be the influencer, the persuader, teaching your kids how to think. Not just telling them how to think, but teaching them how to think. 
Not just giving them the answer, challenging, challenging them to think, challenging them to come up with solutions. And, and, and they can't learn to think for themselves if they're just little fucking robots, little sheeps that can't think for themselves, that have no discipline, that have been taught jack fuck all. Think about that. You need to challenge them. So I was told that I was a horrible father, horrible parent. First of all, I, I'm involved in, I don't even know, five, six, seven different businesses right now. And doing that, I still spend more time with my kids than anyone I know. That's the first thing. Not that I need to justify this stuff, but just I want to just break this down for those, those few overweight people. And I'm just, again, just stating the facts. They happen to be overweight. Uh, we could help you out with that if you need some help. But, you know, that's a whole nother, whole nother episode. Whole nother fucking episode. But so let me tell you this. Seven days a week, except for right now when the family is traveling and they're away because I had some workshops. I was traveling around for some leadership and team development. We have had projects and Squire program for fathers and sons that we run. Yes, we run a program for fathers and sons. For fathers to be better fathers and better men to their fucking sons so they could grow up to be better men. Manly men. Fucking masculine men. That's coming up July 17th here in Southern California. It's called the Squire Program. It's an offspring of the project where fathers and their teenage sons come in as kind of a rite of passage into manhood. So yes, these are the type of things that I do. The only times I don't have dinner with my kids. Other than that, if I'm not at an event or traveling... Seven days per week, I have dinner with my kids and my family. Seven days per week. Do you, sir, that was behind on the line, that was doing your due diligence as an American citizen fighting a war on non-mask wearers, do you have dinner seven days a week with your family? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Just asking a question. I also exercise, train with my family and my kids five to seven days a week. Now, summertime, it'll be seven days a week. When they're in school, eh, four to five to seven. Working out. We read together seven days a week. We meditate together seven days a week. I drive them to school two days a week when they have school and pick them up two days a week. The kids do work around the house. They do, I, they go to Brazilian jiu-jitsu lessons. They go to horseback riding lessons. They go to shooting, the shooting range lessons. They go to the gym they go running, hiking, biking. They do boxing classes. They teach boxing classes. They go to soccer games, tennis lessons. And every Wednesday afternoon, it's daddy-daughter date. That's what that is. So maybe I'm just, you know, that, that list that I just said, which I, I don't even need to list or, or impress upon anyone. Just really, if anything, I want to give a checklist for men out there of shit that you're, it's okay to do. Shit you should be doing. Shit you should be putting on your checklist to do. And not giving a fuck with little douchebags on the grocery store line or on the internet say about you and your masks and your guns and your manliness. You know what I know was going, was going downhill? And this is a while ago. This is already, I don't even know, 10, 15 years ago. So I try to train. I try to eat fairly healthy. I try to stay in fairly decent shape all year round. When I noticed when at the beach, I started... You know, people overweight used to be afraid to take off their shirt at the beach because they were embarrassed, whatever you want to say, which you shouldn't be making fun of people at the beach or whatever. But I, I got to the point, it got to the fucking point where if you were in decent shape, you couldn't take your shirt off of the beach because you would get mocked and made fun of. It's fucking crazy. It's crazy. Like you're shy hiding your muscles in your six pack. Because you don't want to, I don't know, I, I, don't, I don't even get it. It's such a fucked up, I can't even understand it, mixed up twisted ass psychology that goes into that. I can't even fucking explain it. But I knew that shit was going downhill. And this is like over a decade ago when I was, I had a shirt off of the beach. I was working out with, who's, I don't remember. I think we were working out before you, Tyson was even warm. We were working out on the beach and people were, the overweight people, of course, were mocking us, imitating the movements, laughing. They're all drunk, eating their fucking cheeseburgers and all the other bullshit, mocking us while we're training on the beach talking about steroids and all this stuff. You can't, if you lose weight, you have cancer. If you have any muscle, you're on steroids. Shit, I'm skinny as fuck. If I, got, if I had some steroids, I got a bad batch. I want a refund on that shit if, if that's what it gets for you. So all that list I just said of what I, what I do as a manly father, a fucking masculine man, the father teaching my son how to be a fucking man. Yes, I'm gonna teach him to be a manlier fucking man than me. You wanna call it angry? You wanna call it dysfunctional? All I could say is, very respectfully, fuck you. That's what I could say. Maybe I should be more normal. 
a more normal American dad. You know, the one that wakes up late, barely makes it to work on time, sits at work all day miserably, half-asses their fucking job, not happy with their career, with their life, with their business, stops off maybe at the bar on the way home, or to go get some fucking McDonald's on the way home. By the time they get home, they're so pissed off and miserable. They take all that misery from their fucked up day into their home and they just want to sit on the house, sit on the couch, eat some fucking ho-hos and ding-dongs and put some shit down their fucking pie holster, neglecting their kids with no energy to play with their kids. Meanwhile, their kids then are, are have their face buried in a fucking tablet and your kids are getting raised by... Rappers and actors and basketball players who think their ideals are what your kids need to follow. Meanwhile, those those motherfuckers could shut the fuck up too. A big old shut the fuck up to them. Like, shut up. You bounce a ball, you throw it to a fucking hoop. That's what you do. What how does that what does that make your you think that you know you are right about everything? Think about that. So maybe I should be more of the normal American man, more of the American dad. The sad new men that are out there that sit and complain about everything, seek approval for everyone, neglect their fucking kids when they come home, are miserable all day and they get home and just complain about it, bring all that misery and negativity into their house, creating another generation of fucking whiners and weaklings, letting the internet and celebrities raise their fucking kids that they maybe see for a few minutes a day and have no energy to do anything with their kids. Maybe I should be more like that normal, average American man. The new man. And I could speak up against the intruders who don't wear their masks. Or the intruders who own guns in this country. The evil gun owners that teach their kids about guns. And actually spend time educating their kids. Shooting with their kids. Exercising with their kids. It's toxic. It's toxic masculinity. It's... It's fear-mongering, all this other, shut the fuck up. Go that away. Get the fuck away from here. Get out of here. Every action I make, every decision I make is with that role model mindset. To become the type of man that your son wants to become and the type of man your daughter would one day want to marry if you let her out of the house before she's 40. Just kidding. Sort of. That's what being a man is. But if you're, think about it. That could go one way or the other. Role model mindset. If you're that little weasel in the grocery store, that little weasel in the nectar, that little weasel on the internet talking shit about kids because they are learning about guns and have hobbies and spend time as a family together, that's what you're going to be creating. Just know that. Just know that. Another soft, weak fucking generation. That's what you're creating. So cut that shit out. It ain't fucking cool. Get your shit together. Get your fucking head out of your ass. Start thinking for yourself so that you could teach your kids to think for themselves. Because it's going in a bad fucking direction is the way it's going these days. Fuck that. Fuck that. Anyway, again, be the type of man your son would one day want to become. Be the type of man one day your daughter would want to marry. I got to get rolling. I still have some shit to do. Any questions, comments, put them down below. I know the Instagrams disappears after you go off. How'd you get the funding to start your businesses? How'd you get the funding? By waking up earlier than everyone else, going to sleep later than everyone else, busting my ass, and mainly having a fucking positive attitude, a killer attitude, not bullshitting, not making excuses, getting off my ass and maximum fucking effort in everything I did. Giving, not having, being, having, having a, a thing of, think of delayed gratification, not looking for the quick fix, putting the pieces into place, building the relationships with the people you need to build them with, learning, studying, growing. That's how, by everything we just, everything I mentioned in this video really is how. That's how. Having, being disciplined and consistent in the workouts, in, in journaling, in reading, in studying, and leveling up. Like right now, the family's away. I'm reading three or four hours a day. 
in addition to the work I'm doing. I'm fucking reading and studying, taking courses, learning about sales. So how do you fund the business? You fund it yourself. Of course, there's, there's, you, need, you need to learn some high level, high income skills. Sales and marketing is always a great place to start. You're always gonna have to fucking sell stuff. Just trying to answer some of those questions that are here on the Instagrams. If you had all the joints and bongs and booze, it would have been acceptable and you would be the family of the year. Yes, of course. If I had all the prescription drugs and some weed and was teaching them, giving them, teach them about that stuff and whatever else and pumping them full of all kind of medication they don't need just because they are, they are fucking getting fucked up because of the way that you, the, the parents are acting and neglecting them. Now the kids have the ABCD, ACDC or whatever and they got to be on all kinds of medication. Fuck yeah, that's a cool way to do it, right? I should just pump them full of drugs, let them sit in front of a, a tablet all day so I can go veg out on the couch and put my guns away because guns are evil. Don't teach a boy how to be a man. These days you want to teach a boy how to be a bitch. Super how on Instagram. Yes, people are getting way too soft. New world is disgusting. Just reading some comments here below. Where are all the real men these days? Sheep. Pamela Hawkins, what's up? Anyway, any more questions, comments, put them down below. Anything you want to add to the conversation, send me a private message. Let's talk about it. If you need any help with stepping up as being a man, as being a leader, send me a private message. We have tons of programs to talk about one-on-one high-level mind-body business, Operate to Dominate Coaching, which you can do online, or The Project, which is held in person here in Southern California. We have Class of the Project coming up in August, November, and February, already all filling up. It's a 75-hour personal development program to level up in your family, fitness, finances, and faith. Faith meaning self-confidence, belief in yourself, belief in your abilities to reach your goals and the other of those F-bombs to become an even better husband, an even better father, and an even better and more manly and masculine motherfucking man. If you have any questions, comments, send me a message. Let's talk about what jump on the phone, see which program would be a good fit for you. I will talk to you later. And in case no one told you yet today, you are fucking awesome. No excuses.